That man is playing Galaga. Thought we wouldn't notice, but we did. Few games from the early 1980s reached the mainstream quite like Galaga did. Galaga is arguably the pinnacle of fixed point shooters. It took what Space Invaders brought to the table in 1978 and perfected it just a few years later in 1981. On his blog All in Color for a Quarter, Keith Smith took a look at the old Replay Magazine's charts and saw that Galaga was the second most popular game for the early 1980s, surprisingly second only to Sega's Monaco GP. Now if you take into account the later years that Keith Smith didn't look at, Galaga probably won out because Monaco GP really didn't have the staying power in the late 80s, while Galaga still does. You can still go to laundromats and bars and see Galaga machines everywhere. Surprisingly, despite its popularity, a home port was not very common. One would imagine this would be one of the games people would want to take home from the arcades. I'm not sure if it's the mini moving sprites, or just the timing of the release, or something else, but it was not on the Atari 2600, Coleco, Intellivision, or really any of the big players. Actually, the first port seen in the US was the NES port in 1988. The only reason I could find is a possible fear of anything Galaga related being destroyed by a freak bull accident. The lack of ports is even more strange since Galaxian, Galaga's predecessor, had numerous ports. I'm not sure if the name was more recognizable at the time, but Galaxian was a 1979 release to the arcades. Galaga was late in 1981, December to be exact. But Galaxian was getting top billing even in 1982 after Galaga was released. For example, for the Atari 5200's launch, Galaxian got top billing. This summer, the really hot video games come from Atari. We've got Centipede, Ms. Pac-Man, Vanguard, and Galaxian. If you thought it was going to be just another summer, Atari is going to turn your head around. The hot names, the hot games, the hot deals. Yeah, it's gonna be a hot cause nobody's hotter than Atari this summer. Nobody's hotter than Anyways, all of this is just to preface the surprising fact that the SG-1000 is the only home port of Galaga to exist by 1983. There was an MSX port to come the next year in 1984, and a Famicom didn't get a release of Galaga until 1985. Oddly enough, the US did not get a home console release until 1988 when Bandai brought over Galaga Demons of Death. Sega did not seem to have a special relationship with Namco at this time, so them getting Galaga seems kind of odd to me. They did have a relationship with Midway, who released Galaga in the United States. They had a pretty good relationship with them from 1983 to 1985. However, with this being a Japanese release, I have no idea how Galaga happened on the SG-1000. The bottom line, if you wanted to bring the arcade hit Galaga home, you had to have an SG-1000 or settle with Galaxian. Hey, that's Roger. Yeah, it's the official tabletop version of the arcade game. It plays the same. Where'd you get it? Mr. Arcade is here. Galaxian, it's mine. Pac-Man. You want to take it home? Yeah. My own Pac-Man. Mr. Arcade, could you? 
Donkey Kong? Donkey Kong? The official tabletop version. Frogger, Donkey Kong, and Midway's Pac-Man and Galaxia. The arcade games you can take home with you from Coleco. Now, Galaga on the SG-1000 is anything but the arcade experience brought home, at least in terms of graphics. If you remember the very first episodes when we saw the Vic Duel games, they were almost arcade perfect. But those days have long since gone. This game really just bears the most basic resemblance to the arcade version. But the game is still distinctively Galaga. The chance to reclaim your ship and have double attacks are there, the music is there, the basic gameplay is here, and most of all, all of the fun is here. Sega Galaga has you pitted against the insectoid-like enemies led by the boss's Galagas. The Galagas have the ability to enslave your ship and turn it into a drone. Underneath the Galagas are two units called bees and butterflies. The Galagas take two hits to destroy, while the other enemies, the bees and butterflies, only take one. The Sega SG-1000 port of Galaga at first comes off as more challenging than the arcade original due to the close proximity that your ship has to the enemies, and the fact that the enemies seem extremely aggressive for really any of the Galaga ports I've played. But if you do manage to get a double ship, you can just lay waste to the enemies during their approach to formation. Bottom line, Sega Galaga is a really good game, but suggesting this game is tough. If you want a great space game for the SG-1000, which is what the SG-1000 excelled at, it's kinda hard to do better. However, there are so many good ports of Galaga that are just insanely easy to come by and cost very little money. I mean, you can download an arcade perfect port to any modern system for less than shipping this game from Japan. So I would suggest definitely not skipping on this game if you find a good deal. But if you don't find a good deal, use the SG-1000 as a chance to expand your library on games that you can't get anywhere else. Pick up Girls Garden, Pack Car, then buy Galaga on a compilation disc. And if you liked this video, be sure to check out my last video where I took a look at Pack Car. You can also check out my first video for an introduction to the series and the SG-1000. And next time we're going to look at Space Slalom, which is one of the most expensive games for the SG-1000.